You've got some explaining to do, Tiger. Trained from childhood as an Atlas assassin, with over a thousand successful jobs to your name. Damn near killed my two best men before they brought you in. Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. You're going to have to allow me a little bit of nostalgia here for a minute because I remember sitting on my sofa when we hit a thousand subscribers thinking, my word, all we need to do is get this a hundred times more and we'll be like proper YouTubers. And here we are and it's incredible. Thank you so much to all of you that have supported the channel. I've had a good four hours sleep since last night's epic marathon of videos. And do you know what? I just felt like there's a couple that I want to get done. Not because I have to, not because I'm desperate to get the content out. I just want to do it to be honest, so I am. So this video is going to focus on the performance of the trickiest technical Borderlands game on the Switch, and the next one is going to look at that Bioshock 3 Infinite. So here's Borderlands the pre-sequel on the Nintendo Switch. How does it perform? What control options have you got? And how does it run on the Switch? Well, let's find out. Insanity and a hero. First things first, let's go through some of the control options. Now, just as with the other Borderlands game on Switch, we have a very good implementation of gyroscopic aiming. This allows for motion controls when you're aiming or just to control the camera. It has adjustable sensitivity, However, if you enable auto-aiming, it will disable the gyroscopic aiming, which was a bit of a shame because I do like a touch of assistance sometimes when not using a mouse and keyboard, but I guess there's probably reasons for this as it's a predominantly online game. Another option that's nice to see here is a field of view slider, going from 70, which is the default, all the way past 90 and 100. Now, I've not tested the frame rate when increasing this as there's a potential it could impact performance, but we'll talk a little bit more about performance in the next section. You'll also find a colorblind mode, options to change the field of view and a host of little toggles and switches so you can have it looking exactly how you want. As for the performance, well this was the one I think people were most worried about as it had a few issues elsewhere and I've got to say they have done a cracking job. It's 30 frames per second, absolutely locked out at all times. There are a couple and I mean very 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 few stutters at times but they're very difficult to spot and generally it's just on point. I can't be sure that this one is actually running at 1080p like Borderlands 2 is but it's still high enough that it looks crisp and clear. Now thankfully they've done a semi-decent job here in terms of anti-aliasing with jaggy edges being minimal and even over my large, I say large, 32 inch, that's not a large TV at all is it? That's actually like microscopic. But even over that TV it's looking okay from a short distance. Shadow maps while taking a bit of a hit are still present and correct and not looking too shabby and the level of detail bias doesn't seem to be too bad. You don't generally see much of the world popping in in front of you or suddenly going into HD as you approach. There is a touch of it like I say as seems to be a quite popular tweak method on the Nintendo Switch with the Unreal Engine, but it's not too bad at all. Textures seem crisp enough, mainly due to the decent resolution, and in handheld it's Oh, it's looking so good. It's such a nice game to play in handheld, this one. With performance seemingly up to par in handheld as well, which is just, these guys have really excelled themselves. So not too much to say here, really. They've done a great job. There is split screen mode again. I haven't got any footage of that one, but it seems to run at the same performance. In terms of the game itself, for veteran players, it was nice to see a host of new characters to choose from, especially Handsome Jack. But it is a bit strange when you're playing as Handsome Jack and then you find Handsome Jack. <laughs> it's a it's a bit of an odd one. Character model design overall is excellent and the animations remain fluid throughout. The artificial intelligence, while not the best I've ever seen, is certainly not the worst for a first person shooter and I found the game quite challenging. Now as to my impressions of the title, well I'm sure you've gathered, I love Borderlands. I didn't think the pre-sequel was the best and if you were looking for one of them to buy on the Switch I'd personally go for Borderlands 2 but it's still a nice game. And if you've played or completed the other ones, it's a worthy pickup and a worthy addition to the series. Just as with the other game, unless you've got someone to play locally, it's a game you're going to want to find some online friends for. Ah, one of life's biggest issues for me. And I would again suggest checking out our Discord channel if you want to set up some games. Playing this with four people, especially if you can set up some form of chat, either through your mobile device, as I don't know if it has native voice chat, I can't confirm that, is essential. Overall then, I think 2K have hurt a lot of wallets over this weekend. The next video will be looking at that Bioshock Infinite and giving you a real thorough rundown on that one because there's quite a lot of interesting things going on. It's really quite clever. Remember our other performance reviews are out, we'll put a link in the top comment for you if you want to 
to check those out. So far we've had Bioshock 1 and 2 with quite a detailed rundown of those and Borderlands 2 and they've performed very well overall. Now one game that didn't perform quite as well and it wasn't really expected to. Something about the engine, there's just something about that engine that doesn't quite like consoles and that's XCOM 2. It's by no means unplayable. It's 30 for some of the time and then it dips down some of the glitchiness is in there but the actual gameplay oh it's so nice to have XCOM 2 on the switch and in all honesty of all of the games that I've been playing it's the one that I keep going back to in between writing and making these videos do please leave a comment go visit one of the other videos say hello if you're a new subscriber and remember we give away well we're giving away two geotech controllers on Twitter that's at switch up G if you want to go check that out and we're also giving away two copies or three copies of children of mortar in our sales video and also the guys over at hypercharged unboxed have just given us a ton of codes to give away to say congrats on the hundred thousand subscribers so my word all all the giveaways as always for all things switch all the time keep it switch up oh and a big thanks to our patrons who support us every single month you shouldn't do it because there's a pandemic going on but we do appreciate it keep it switch up cheers guys see ya